Hi, this is Nick at Atlantic Laser Scanning. Today we're going to take a relatively small project done indoors and we are going to register it. Take a look at a few different options as we do. We can jump directly into Explorer here just to take a look at a couple of our scans and sort of see what it is that we're looking at. As we can see, we've got an indoor scan project. Uh, looks to be a control room. And uh, what's interesting about the control room here is we've got permanent checkerboards that have been installed in the room. The permanent checkerboards are uh, numbered and uh, looks like they've been there for many previous scans. So uh, that will give us an option on registration. As long as we've got good coverage of the uh, of the walls as we go through the project. Now, opening another scan, we can take a look here. Um, again, we've got one, two. Uh, incidence angle is going to be really bad on this one here. I wouldn't consider that. And uh, this one looks to be probably too far away. Uh, now we're looking at uh, some of these checkerboards that are installed as really not being of much use to us. Uh, if they're too far away or a bad angle, they're just not going to be picked up uh, when we do pre-processing. So uh, that's something to think about as we move forward through our registration. So again, one, two, three, that should be enough in this location. Uh, so what I would probably recommend here is to begin uh, our registration with just an auto registration, being that it's indoors. A lot of times uh, the easiest, most effective way to do this is going to be with an auto registration. So we go into our registration uh, key here, not pre-processing for that. Uh, we click on the perform automatic registration. Uh, here's our base screen uh, but over here we've got our registration method so as we hit the drop down menu we've got a target based a top view cloud to cloud and a combination of top view and cloud to cloud now again for those of you who haven't done a lot of this kind of work uh, to define these uh, three different registration methods you've got a target base which again if we were going to rely on the checkerboard targets that are on the walls in the project uh, space. Uh, it would need generally three of those checkerboards, uh, preferably on different walls, nothing on the floor, nothing on the ceiling, in order to really orient these scans and tie them together. Uh, as we've seen, some issues are, are being presented with this project because of, of the way that those checkerboards were set up. Maybe they were uh, scanned in different locations previously and this time it just uh, was not set up with scan locations to really utilize those very well uh, you've got top view based registration and that's going to be when the software uh, looks down on the scans say scan number one and two uh, it'll look past the roof in this case uh, and then it will rotate the scans looking for common geometry corners walls furniture, equipment, and then it'll put the scans together that way. Uh, third, we've got cloud to cloud looking for uh, common XYZ points between scans. Uh, that's a way to, uh, to put them together. And lastly, you've got the combination of top view and cloud to cloud. Um, this is sort of a default for scene right now. What that's going to do is position the, scan, the scans together by looking down on them and rotating them, as I mentioned. Uh, once that puts them in place, cloud to cloud will then be used uh, to sort of tighten those scan location registrations up. So um, we can always, if we run into an issue, we can go back, do some pre-processing if things don't come together very well, and then go back and use target base. Um, but again, for right now, we're going to stick with the top view cloud to cloud and uh, see what we come up with. It looks as though the uh, software has put our project together. We'll go ahead and allow it to load our points so we can take a look at it here. 
looks as though they've been properly placed. We will say yes. We can take a look at the report if we want. We've got a 6.5 millimeter error, which if we need to tighten up, we can run another registration on that. Um, but it looks good. We'll jump into our explore button here. load up all the scans without having put a project point cloud together uh, we are going to need to uh, manually load the scans on our scan tree in order to see the entire uh, scan cluster and uh, that should be taking a little longer than normal but we don't want to create a project point cloud unless we've got our project together uh, otherwise it takes a long time to build, build a project point cloud and then every time you go back and you try to make a change or if there's a scan out of place you need to save it and re-update that project point cloud uh, just in my opinion not worth creating the project point cloud until you know you've got a good solid registration now you may wonder why we did not add color to the project during the registration process uh, there's a couple different reasons for that number one it does take extra time uh, number two uh, i personally am a believer that uh, you need to if you're going to be doing measuring work in scene at all uh, first register the project put it together without color uh, in this case uh, we'll just take a look at one of our scans here see if we can find something um, you have a huge difference in the lighting when you add the photographs to the scans. So as you can see, everything looks as though it's lit up, it's crystal clear, and, uh, and this is great. But if you take a look under here, you're gonna start seeing some things that are underneath this tank. And if we added the, uh, the photographs, the, a lot of this may be obscured because it is in shadows. Um, that is a real problem when it comes to uh, going through in your 2D uh, you know, inspections. If you want to grab something in, in 3D, that's fine. Uh, say we want to go in here and do a rectangular selector, and we will right-click View and 3D View. This is going to give us the ability to look at this spot. and see the detail in 3D. If we have a photograph that's on top of this, and this is all very dark, uh, number one, we're not gonna know what we're looking at, and we're going to need to open this up in a 3D view just to try to get some sort of an idea. Now, if you're pulling any sort of uh, measure points off of a, a, a point down here in the dark, um, this is, is going to be excessively uh, difficult because you're not going to be able to see what you're looking at if you've got color added. So in my opinion, adding the color should be the very last thing that you do uh, and uh, until you get all of your measuring done. Now finally, if you are satisfied with your registration, uh, if you've pulled enough measurements, you're comfortable with working in the, uh, in the lighting that we've got in their project um, we can just jump this is one way to do this uh, not the only way but we can go up here to our settings in the top right hand corner jump into our old user interface uh, this gives us a lot more detail to work with a lot of different things we can do that uh, may be a little bit harder to do in the new interface uh, they try to simplify it, the new interface and uh, you know when you try to simplify things sometimes you lose the detail that you might need for different uh, different projects. If you go to the upper scans folder, right click, go to operations, down here to color pictures. You can see where we can now apply the pictures. We can do this to the entire group of scans. We can also pick a scan. And we can do it um, to just a single scan. Now, let's go ahead and uh, do a single scan. And as this cooks, We'll take a look at it when it's finished. We can go in, double click, and give us a quick view. And there we have it.
we have a beautiful colorized view of this scan. Again, we do lose some of our visual acuity in some of these areas, uh, but maybe that's not going to be something that bothers you. Uh, if you do run into an issue where you colorized it and you went, oh man, you know, I can't see what I thought I was going to see, uh, not a big deal. You can go directly back into that scan. This is something you have to do scan by scan. You can't go to the scans folder uh, if you want to remove the color. So you go into each scan, right click, operations, and uh, you go down to the color pictures at, um, option. You see where it says restore gray image. Click on this. It's going to say, do you want to proceed? Yes. And then give it a few seconds. It will go ahead and pull the color out again. And uh, no harm, no foul. We are back to our uh, non-colorized image. I hope this helped you guys uh, in some way. If you've got any specific questions or a project that you're running into some issues with, go ahead and uh, drop us an email. Maybe we can help out. Uh, thanks again. This is Nick at Atlantic Laser Scanning Services.